Hey guys, Felix and Dog Team Beyond. I'm here with Cole. I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to have you look at from the side view. Another thing I want to address, people always say, oh, don't put a prong collar. Why? Because it's gonna to torture the dog. As you'll see, I am not torturing him. I'm using it as a tool of communication. If anyone that says that don't use a prong collar, they really do not understand how to use a prong collar. That's why they say don't use it. Like anything else, you use it the wrong way, it could be used badly. Obviously, uh, as an example, you use an ax to chop a wood, guess what, it's gonna save you. It's gonna provide food for you, because you're gonna use it to cook, you can use it for to keep warm. But once again, you use the ax the wrong way, you could obviously hurt or kill someone. So it's the same thing. A tool used the way it's intended to be used, the right way, will be um, very useful. And I do have his food in my pocket. I have a long line, uh, about maybe 15 feet, and I had the prong collar on him. Food as a reward, prong collar to help motivate him to come to me. If he's like, I'm not listening to you, guess what? He is going to listen to me. Because we have to have a dog listen to us. Why? Because if there's a, a car, something dangerous down there, and we have to call our dogs, we have to have a dog listen to me, right? We don't want our dogs to get hurt or run over, all right? So let's work on this right now, and you'll see. Go here. Here. So he twisted up a little bit, spinning around. But he was playing, but he still came to me. That's what I want right now. That's all I'm asking. I want that intent to come to me when I call him. I'm just using the grass to let him wander. Every day he's going to be wandering. Outside, he's gonna be using the grass, right? So, that's what I'm gonna use right now. I'm just gonna use the grass as distraction, the trees. Now he's getting, right now he's getting the idea, I've done this already a few times, he's like, oh, I stay with him, I'm gonna to get to get food. No, 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 no. You go out and I call you, and you come, then you get food. So he's getting smart on the game. So this is something a lot of people have, like, oh, my dog won't go away from me. Well, guess what? He doesn't get anything until you call him and he does what you ask him to do. Go here. Yes, good boy. That was the best one. That was the best one. He came to me and he came to my front and sat. So that was the best one. So I won't do it for let him wander around. Let him get you to forgetting about the me being here, the food. Interested in the grass and the snow. I ain't call you. No, no. Go, 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 go play. So that time he's like, oh, I'm coming to you. Where's my food? No, 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 no. I ain't call you. Go here. Go here. Yes. Nope, over here. Good. So I'm only going to reward him when he's in my space now. He can't be behind me. He has to be in my space. All right? So now he's, like I said, he's trying to stay with me because he thinks, oh, that's what I want. That's not exactly what I want. Not right now. What I want is for him to come when I call him. And this is what you have to teach your dog. Not stay with me and, you know, you get your reward. It's when I call you, you that's when you get it. Very important, you have difference. So, if you're doing this exercise, don't feed him because, oh, he came to me. Did you call him? No, then don't feed him. Simple as that. So now he's like playing with me. He wants to play, he wants the food. So he's like, what do I have to do to get the food? So even though he is coming back when I call him, guess what? He still doesn't understand what I want. That's why we gotta do repetition. 
Don't want him to get interested in something. There he is. Oh, here. Nope, over here. Nope. So he came to me, but he's not from me. So I'm going to ask him for more. Oh, yeah. Yes, good boy. Good job, my man. What I just did is what... I want finally, which is for him to come to my front and sit, which he just did. All right, he even went behind me, so I helped him. I used the line and I put pressure towards the front, and he got the idea. The idea was to come to front, come in front of me, and that's where you get your reward. So, lesson learned, and this happens to people that I work with. They feed the dog. In different spots. So feed the dog over here. They feed the dog over here. They feed the dog over there. Now, if you feed the dog in random spots, he's gonna choose one of those spots. Whether he's maybe three feet in front of you, and you have to go out to feed him. If you keep on doing that, oh, let me give you. I'm gonna step over here and reach out and give you food. If you keep on doing that, guess what? He's gonna do. Every time you call him, that's where he's gonna be. All right. So if you want him to be in front of you. That's where you feed him. He doesn't get his food until you're right in that spot. So I like my dogs, the dogs I work with, um, in my space. That means my space, my close space is within arm ra range without reaching out to him. Okay? I mean, I should say extend out to him. Okay? So I'm not going to extend out. I'm going to I'm gonna be here as long as my arm, and that's fine. All right? Right there. As long as he's within your space. You don't want to be stepping out to him and then reaching all the way out to him, bending over, all right? That will become a habit, all right? So this is Felix with Dog Chain Beyond. Hopefully, you will get some of these tips and help your dog, all right? Talk to you soon.